All right, there we go. Okay, we're going to get started. It's two o'clock straight up. Welcome. Uh, I want to announce that this meeting is being recorded. And uh, the, the recording will be posted on the Hearing Well Club YouTube channel. I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, Caption Call is our uh, is a is our sponsor. Um, Caption Call provides landline phones. Uh, has an an app for the iPhone to provide captions, and you can have. Caption call on an iPad. The purpose of having captions is so you can use the phone with confidence. And here's some new information you may not have heard. If you don't have a landline phone, caption call will provide one at no charge. If you don't have the internet, caption call will provide one uh, provide a hotspot that is dedicated to your phone and so that you'll have the internet for your caption call phone. So if you are, if you would like more information, please call them at toll free 800-557-2227. And uh, Patty is providing captions for us today. I'm going to show you in a moment how to get captions. Thank you, Caption Call, for providing funds to pay for captions. Um, our, another club sponsor is who they just happen to be our presenters today, uh, Ann Mundell Noel and Laura Hunt from Amazing Hearing, available in Laguna Woods and the Trader Joe's Shopping Center. Also, uh, Here Now USA provides hearing loops for your uh, TV room throughout your house uh, in public venues and houses of worship. And if you need information on any of those sponsors, I'm happy to provide them. Just give me an email. So I want to give you some instructions for viewing on a desktop. Um, computer, uh, or it could be a laptop computer. Um, it will not be addressing iPhone, Android phone, or iPad or tablets. Um, and again, this is a reminder, this meeting is being recorded, and it will be posted on the Hearing Well uh, Club YouTube channel. I want to thank the HLAA California State Association for providing these um, instructions to show you. So I'm going to talk about captions, uh, transcript, chat window, and raise hand. So if you look at the bottom, if you don't see your, um, your control panel at the bottom, you may have to tap the screen and so that they appear. Look for the CC button, click on it, and you have three menu items pop up. Turn on captions by clicking, uh, clicking on subtitles right here. If you need to make the uh, captions larger, click on CC again, and then choose subtitle settings. And then you'll see that you can glide and make smaller or larger at the top, the captions. Okay. If you'd like to see a full transcript, you can click on the CC button and click full transcript and it'll pop up. And it'll, it'll pop up on the side for you. 
Okay, the full transcript is not available in full screen mode. If you want to change from full screen to uh, not full screen, you'll find that control in the upper left hand, uh, right hand corner of your screen. I want to talk about the chat window. The, the chat window, if you see the icon in your um, control bar down below, and again, if you're not seeing your control bar, just tap on the screen, anywhere on the screen, and it'll pop up. And you should see the chat bar. If you open it, just click on it to open. And it looks like this right here, where I'm waving my mouse, is where you can type in your message and press enter and everybody will get it. So if you're looking at your chat box right now and it's glowing, there's a message in there and you wanna tap it to read it. If you wanna send a message privately to somebody, you need to change, you click on this little carrot Find the name of the person you want to send a message to and click on the name. And then it'll say privately, type of message, press enter, and the message goes privately. Okay. Um, you may want to pop out. You may want to pop out the window because if you're getting messages, it may cover up. Uh, the captions. So you can um, open the captions and click at the top, the little arrow, and it'll say pop out. So click on pop out and then drag the chat box over to the side, anywhere on the screen that you like. Okay. I'd like you to use the chat function to ask for test technical support while we're going through this uh, presentation. I want to thank Alan Katsura for providing technical support. He's already sent a message and you can um, reply to him. Open the chat box and you can reply. Thank you, Alan. To ask a question or to make a comment, I want you to click on the participants icon. Again, if you can't see your control panel, click anywhere on the screen, it'll pop up. It disappears and moves out of the way when you're watching the program. But when you want it back, just click the uh, anywhere on the screen. So in the, when you open participants, you should see in the lower right-hand corner of that box, it says raise hand. So I'd like everybody right now just to test this out. Open participants, find the raise hand and click it. I wanna see everybody raise their hand. Very good, keep going. Everybody try. This is how we're gonna answer questions at the end. Uh, with when you get more than uh, 24 people, I can't see anybody who's waving at me. So you have to use the raise hand feature. I'm waiting for more people to, to try to raise hand. All right, good. Look, open participants, click on raise hand at the bottom. Thank you. Oh, this is, this is what it looks like. <laughs> and you'll see a blue hand next to your name. All right. That's all for the instructions right now. Uh, we're holding virtual meetings online using Zoom on the second Tuesday of every month. Um, you can check hearingwellclub.com for all the latest news. I'm Tony Berrien. I'm the president of the Hearing Well Club. And you can reach me at info at hearingwellclub.com. Okay. Good to see everybody. Um, I'm now going to ask uh, Anne and uh, Anne Mundell Noel and Dr. Laura Hunt 
welcome and let's have you can start with a screen share unmute yourself welcome can you hear us yes yes okay I hear you. all right <laughs> Well, thank you for allowing us to speak again at the Hearing Well Club meeting. This meeting is for you and we are here for you. So although we are presenting information, we want to make sure that what we are giving you is helpful. So I do want to encourage you to let us know through the presentation if we are talking too fast, I doubt if you'll ever tell us we're talking too slow, but if you can't keep up with the captioning, please raise your hand, do something to catch our attention because we are seeing some of you on our screen and we would like to make sure that as you're sitting here, you can gather the information correctly. Is that fair? Can I get a thumbs up, everybody? Yep, thumbs up, is that okay? Good. Okay, go to the first slide. So I'm gonna pull this back. <laughs> we, we're doing a two man show here. So for us, there you go, okay. Um, what started out to be a short term inconvenience, as we all know, has turned into some long term adjustments. Um, it has been a wild ride that I'm sure none of us anticipated. And unfortunately, we're not sure how long this is going to continue. So what we have to do with anything in life is learn to adapt. Yet I feel that this group has had to do the most adaptation of anyone basically that is surviving and trying to thrive through this. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. One of the major problems initially is that we have this six feet distancing. Okay, doesn't seem to be too bad. Sure, we're six feet apart. One of the major problems is that the microphone on your hearing aid in order to be most effective is six feet or less, not six feet or more, okay? Can I get an amen to that one, right? Unfortunately, hearing aids, just by the nature of the microphone, their scope rolls off after six feet. As you know, compounded with the mask, now we have a double whammy. So what we are going to do is we're gonna talk about ways to survive and thrive. I know lots of you have come up with some unique um, ways to do this and we would love to hear the interaction from you. Again, we are here just to be facilitators of the information. So one of the main things that I think has really evolved that people did not expect is this isolated lifestyle. And again, in Laguna Woods, I just applaud Tony for this meeting, for her to keep going, to find a new way for you to participate and feel connected. I know she was one of the first groups to get started and I think that that has helped other groups in Laguna Woods recognize that, hey, if people with a hearing loss can stay connected and hear each other, then why can't other groups? So how many of you just kind of raising your hand would say the Hearing Well Club was the first group that you participated in in Laguna Woods? And I think, yep. I think that we all just need to give a shout out to Tony, right? She really needs, seriously, she needs to know how important this group is because you do need to feel connected. Hearing loss in and of itself already has a degree of isolation. And when we compound it with the masks 
and the social distancing and staying inside, it just becomes exponential. And so we will talk a little bit more about that today, but I do want to just address it that it's normal to feel disconnected during these times. And although it's different, we, need, we are going to encourage you to make as many small steps as you can to make an impact in your life. Okay, so what we also know during this reduced social isolation is that a lot of people have stopped wearing their hearing aids or limited their hearing aid use. Anybody wanna raise a hand on that one? Yeah, some people. Okay, Anne. Yeah. So we, we have over 24 people. And so we you cannot see everybody without flipping your screens and all sure. that, which I don't want you to do. So we're using the blue hand. Okay. So open up participants and you can see people with a blue hand. Perfect. And that's how they're going to ask questions and that's how they're going to respond to Perfect. You. I appreciate that. It does pop up here when it told us who raised their hand. Okay, but we can't see them. All right. So um, when you wear your hearing aid, again, coming from the audiologist, I'm going to get on my little soapbox here. The whole purpose of wearing a hearing aid is to replace the portion of the message that is not getting to the brain clearly. Whether or not it's a hearing aid or a cochlear implant, it doesn't matter. The idea behind that is that the brain is looking for a full stimulus. Unfortunately, physiologically and physically, it's not receiving the message. And so we're wearing some kind of a device to improve the signal getting up to the brain. When you don't wear your hearing aids, for whatever reason, you are putting so much more stress on your body. So when you think about it, hmm, I'm indoors, I'm kind of feeling lonely. Well, I'm not gonna put on my hearing aid because there's nobody here to talk to. That is the thought process of a lot of people. And I want to have one of the takeaways from today's meeting being nothing is more important then starting your day out, giving yourself as much help as possible. So what you should do is have your hearing aids right next to your bed stand. And the first thing in the morning, as you put your feet on the ground, is to put your ears on. Because your hearing aids are your sense of security. They tell us what's happening in the world. And if they're not, then they're not working right and you need to go get them adjusted. But when you put your hearing aids on and you go, oh, the world is brighter, not only are you hearing more sound, but you are giving your brain more stimulation for balance, for alertness, and most importantly, cognitively. You're giving your brain more information it's going to change your outlook. It's going to make your body less stressed and it's overall going to make you feel better, not worse. So the number one thing as we continue to go through these times is to remember, I've got to wear my hearing aids more rather than less. So the doors have been opening more, patients have been coming back into the office and they're kind of sheepish going, well, I really haven't been wearing my hearing aids. And so we have started kind of holding them accountable. So for any of you who are on this platform today and you have not been wearing your hearing aids on a regular basis, I would like to encourage you to start today. Wear them, wear them, wear them because it's all about you. It's about getting better comprehension. But even if you're not talking to people, I hear my dog, I hear the mailman, I hear the neighbor close the door. The brain needs all that information in order to function normally. The other thing that is also a benefit is that as you wear them more, 
when you start to socialize more and get more into background noise, you will already be prepared. So I think I've stepped on that box long enough, you think? Good yeah, well, I can go ahead and, and get off of that. So next one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you through the poll question, Tony, if you wanna take it away from here, is that what we're gonna do? Tony? So I'd like everybody to answer. We're gonna only take about 45 seconds. So if you can just indicate your, your answer and then I will show everybody so we don't vote. <laughs> yeah. and how they vote. Not, not by name, it's anonymous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's, we got 10 more seconds. Almost everybody, keep going. If you haven't voted, last chance. Okay, we're gonna end the polling and I am going to share the results. There you go. Yahoo! You guys have done great. Yes, I think so too. Yeah, so a lot of you for the same amount as before. Would, I'm gonna ask this, and if people wanna respond in the chat box, is it because you can't survive without them? Meaning is the majority of the people on this call people who have to wear their hearing aids in order to quote, get by? Does that make sense? Oh, we go in the chat. I need your help. So I would have to say probably the reason for that, and I'm happy to hear that. So um, Laura's over here doing my um, my screen. There we go. Okay. Uh, the second thing though, and the more important question, and Tony's gonna put this polling question up, and these are the only two polling questions we have. I know um, several people have commented that they, uh, it takes a long time to do the polling, but it does help the presenter. Um, but the second question, Tony, you can go and put up is, um, how does the quarantine make you feel? You want to advance your, your slide one? Maybe. Hmm. It's not. It so might not to, let me. Oh, there, there you go. go. There you go. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna end the polling. I'm gonna share the results. And I'm sorry, I shared the results last time way too long because I didn't realize that I had to stop what I needed to click to stop. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so the biggest thing is that um, I'm glad to hear that people are feeling more hopeful because you're trying to connect with people more as much as possible. And um, I think that is a great representation of this group showing that um, you're willing to adapt and change and make things better for yourself. So let's keep moving forward with ways that we can help you think out of the box when it comes to the masks and hearing aids. This one. Mm -hmm. 
should be this way. Okay. Um, so one of the things is there are, we're gonna talk about a couple different manufacturers and this is um, just an overview for you to think, hmm, how can I make things better with my hearing aids and my cochlear implant? There are devices out there that will connect directly to your computer. We had somebody come in today with that and I'm gonna have Dr. Laura talk about these devices. We're going to talk about the Widex and the Oticon devices just because we have those at our fingertips. But Starkey, Phonak, um, Resound, and forgetting Siemens also have very similar things. So if your Widex and Oticon is not your manufacturer, you can check with your audiologist or hearing aid dispenser to see what's available. And they may have talked about these in the past and you kind of played them off, oh, I don't need them. But I'm telling you, some of these devices are making people um, change their minds about them. They're, they've been excellent. So here is Dr. Laura. Thank you. Yes, so as Anne was starting to say, we actually had a patient come in earlier today who has been very discouraged because he couldn't hear his family well on his Zoom calls. And so he would turn the TV, or excuse me, the computer all the way up and his hearing aids all the way up, but he just could not get the clarity that he was looking for. So as you can see on our screen, one of these devices is called the Unidex, and it's something that hooks over your, your head, and it actually plugs directly into a computer. So that way, when you're watching a video on a Zoom call, even like this, now the sound is going directly into your hearing devices. So our clarity and sound quality is much, much improved. And he brought in his laptop today when we tried it out, and he was so excited and surprised by how much better he could hear. So again, as Anne was saying, sometimes we think, well, I already have my hearing aids. I don't want to mess with anything else, but there are some options out there that can make certain situations a lot better for you and easier on you. That one I just showed you called the Unidex for Widex does plug directly into a computer um, but there's also something called a Comdex. It looks similar because it also loops around your neck, but it is wireless. So you don't directly plug it into anything. It connects from your hearing aids to this device. And then there's one more piece that goes in a computer. So again, you could stream everything straight into your hearing aids. And that little piece that goes in the computer is one of these small USB devices. So similar products, slightly different option, depending on the hearing aids that you have um, and what you're trying to use it for. The so, other thing that I would add into what Laura is saying is even the Unidex, the one that has the plug in the end of it, this can also be used in some of the flip phones. So if you're having trouble hearing on your flip phone, if it's got one of the ports that still utilizes this little plug, you could plug into it. This can also be used on your television. If on the back of your TV, you have a port for a headset. So anything that has that ability to have this plug in it, you could use this kind of a device. The other one that uses the little dongle and the Bluetooth can be used in mainly computers, but um, it's a, a game changer for many people who are struggling on these Zoom calls. What's that one called? So there's a dongle. So with Widex, it's called the Comdex. 
we're going to talk about it with Otacon, um, but you can talk to your audiologist or your dispenser as to which system works for you. But all the manufacturers have some kind of a system like this that's compatible. And so then similarly with Oticon, again, there are accessories, devices that help you stream the sound directly into your hearing aids, which helps with that sound quality. And for them, it looks different. It does not loop around the neck. Rather, it's a clip that can be put on your clothing. And again, this way you can connect from your hearing aids to this device and then to your computer. Does it also need dongle? alongside one of those dongles, that USB. Something else that this device can do is it can act as a remote microphone. So somebody who has to stay at least six feet away from you, you might have trouble hearing them just due to the distance itself. And this could be clipped onto their shirt so that it streams into your hearing aids and even though they're further away, maybe you have to be outside while you visit with them and there's a lot of road noise and things. Now you are hearing their voice nice and clear without having to worry about that distance. The other thing I would add to that is that this little clip like the, here, Resound, if those of you who wear Resound hearing aids, they have one of the best mini mics in the industry. So if you are struggling um, and you do have Resound hearing aids, their little mini mic might be something that would be very helpful for you if you're having trouble. Um, the other thing that as Laura was talking about with this connect clip, um, one of our hearing well club uh, members, he demonstrated that he was using this connect clip with the dongle in his computers. And he was able to turn off the microphones of the speakers of his computer and hear the computer right into his hearing aids. And he has a severe to profound hearing loss. So this is not somebody who's got a very mild loss, but he was able to hear it so clearly. And then his wife could be next to him reading a book and he didn't bother her with the sound of the speakers. So even if you don't have trouble with the clarity, but you're on your computer more because there's more time at home, these options might be something that you really want to consider. Ann, I think we have a question. Okay. Uh, Brian, you want to unmute yourself and ask your Yes, I, I was just curious about the Unidex and the Comdex. Um, you mentioned the ability of plugging into your television. So my question is, how long are those cords typically? So... Yeah, <laughs> good Not answer. Very long. <laughs> so for the one that plugs in with just the cord, right, if you're plugging into the um, headphone port of the TV, you can buy an extender at Best Buy. Because this is really made, the original intent of this device was made for phones back in the day when we had a cell phone with that plug or when you had a, uh, an iPod. So, but also, um, and as we're about to say with Oticon, having a TV device, um, it might be easier to utilize what's called a TV Dex or a TV Play um, to also stream your hearing aids without having to do it wired. So you could be further away for comfort. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? He's, mute, he's muted already. Thank you. Sorry, I asked my question and then I muted myself. <laughs> does that Thank make you. sense, Brian? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah, so again, there's so many different little accessories that can truly enhance the quality. Because remember, what we're doing here is we are only trying to get the signal 
better into the ears. And that's the, the idea behind all of this. So um, lots of options out there. Hand raised, Diane, did you have a question? Yes, I did. I'm just trying to unmute myself. Um, I'm just wondering if all these accessories are interchangeable between manufacturers. Good question. So unfortunately, they are not interchangeable. Mm -hmm. That's why each manufacturer does have their own version of these accessories. So most brands, you can still find, again, those different options, but they will not be compatible with one another. That's too bad because I have a, a mini mic that I use with my cochlear implants. And right now, it's plugged into my iPad, so I'm streaming the sound directly into my implants, and it's great. But if I use this mic in the days when we could go to restaurants, you know, it was really not the best solution because even if my friends were wearing it, it picked up a lot of external sound. So I was just curious if you know if they were interchangeable and one worked, you know, gave you better sound quality than the other. That would be wonderful. Yeah, the one thing that is universal for all of you is the hearing loop, right? So by putting the loop in your home, even where you watch TV and turning your hearing aid into the T-coil mode, that is universal as long as you have that T-coil. So television watching the least expensive, one of the least expensive ways to improve the quality of sound there is by getting a loop. And I know Rick Archbald of um, Hear USA or Hearing Now, Hear Now, sorry. Um, <laughs> he does an, a fantastic job. So I'm sure, and I know several of you have used his services. So that is a universal solution. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now Dr. Laura is going to talk a little bit about masks and what. Oh, go ahead. Questions. Oh, sorry, we can't see them. <laughs> uh, Daniel. Yes. You have a question. I'm just going to come in. I've been using a amplified neck loop on my computer, and it works just great. Oh, okay. Rather than getting one of those other devices. So talk about that a little bit more, Daniel, for us. Tell us what make and model you have and how yeah. you're utilizing it. I don't know what make it is. Just a Where did you get it? I don't remember. <laughs> did you oh, go it's, clear, it's clear sound. Okay. And I don't know how, I don't remember how I got it. <laughs> did you get it from Tony? Possibly. <laughs> um, but it's, it has a little amplification switch on it. I just plug it into the speaker outlet and it works great. So can you hold it up a little bit closer to the camera so people can see what it looks like? Is that it? Can yep. you see it? Mm -hmm. So that clear sounds and then show them. Does it have a plug at the bottom? Mean this? Is that what you mean? That goes into it. Yep. Yeah. So when you plug it and you're amplifying, how is that? connected to your computer? I just plug it into the speaker outlet. Okay. So he's plugging- And I think I did that with a, with a regular new neck loop and it worked also, but I'm not sure now. So he is using, I can actually go get one while Laura talks a little bit about mass because the adapter is a universal one. Daniel and I forgot about that, but that is a universal. And can you get something like this from the California phones? Correct. Free? Yep, that's exactly where I was going with that, okay. is that you could get one for free from CTAP, the California Telephone Access Program. So I'm glad that Diane asked that question because she just sparked my memory on that. And we've got one right here. Okay, this is an older, a little bit older version. Okay, but basically this is gonna go around your neck and it's going to have a plug and the plug is gonna go into the speaker port on your computer and then that will help improve the quality of sound. 
So do you guys know how to get one from CTAP? Can we do a raise of hands? Or has anybody else got one like Daniel? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, you, uh, if you, you do that, you might want to get a little extra long cord because you're always moving, getting up and unplugging it. That and in sense. regards to the accessories you talked of, rather than going to Best Buy, places like uh, Marshall's have a lot of those things a lot for a lot less money. Oh, good idea. Or going online. Okay, we have get it. Only California residents or just out of state residents can get it too. Like who lives in other states, for example, like Nevada or Arizona, can they just be people can get this or on, no? Only California California residents can get it. They still so, have it. So through the California program, Tony, you probably know more about that than I do, but I believe you need a California address. Is that accurate? Yes. So California telephone access is for uh, residents who are in California. So it is, but you can purchase uh, the uh, clear phones or clear sounds adapter at um, online, uh, Harris Communications is, uh, if you Google Harris Communications, that's a company that you can purchase this from. If, if you say you live in Nevada or New Jersey or wherever. So it is a uh, widely available product. It's free if you have a hearing loss and you are registered with California. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I, I just want to say that on Saturday, this coming Saturday, California Phones is going to be presenting um, an, all their products or uh, talking about their products and everything uh, in a Zoom uh, meeting. And I'm going to put it, uh, the information on how to register uh, in the chat box. And you certainly can talk to me later. I'm going to send an email out to everybody who's on my email list so you'll get it for Saturday's meeting. It's Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, we have another question, but Lisa Kaufman, if uh, you want to unmute yourself. Hi, thank you, ladies. You do such a wonderful job. I had a question about the mini mic. So many church services, for example, are outdoors now. What's the longest distance that you can use the mini mic can you go and put it up on the altar and you know sit in the audience type of thing go ahead you want to you want me to i don't remember the exact footage so i think you're um unfortunately the mini mic and all those types of devices are ultimately made for one-on-one -on -one conversations right small table small group but i do believe that you can get maybe a hundred feet, but you're not gonna be able to utilize it in that large spectrum. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. A hundred feet is still quite a distance, so. Yeah, it's doable, work. it's doable, but it's not optimal. Right. right, thank you. So the bigger part of that is kind of going back onto the, uh, going onto the stand and trying to say, the best part would be to loop your church, right? So that you could turn the hearing aids into the t on the T-coil and then the microphone from the altar would be uh, set up so that it would be amplified. And they are trying to get other solutions with Bluetooth through cell phones. There's a lot of things out there, but nothing really improves the sound fidelity in those groups more than the T-coil does. And uh, that's why that's Tony's uh, push. And uh, I think that's awesome. Okay, Daniel, you, you had further comments? Yeah, and if you're gonna use one of those remote mics, then it's a good idea to put some idea on the back of it. Because if you give it to somebody to wear and you forget, oh, you've yeah. lost a mic. And they're not cheap, right? <laughs> uh, especially if you're going to public meetings. Mm, that's a great idea. That's a really good point. Yeah. 
So Laura's gonna talk a little bit about masks, that uh, nemesis of ours, and um, just kind of a couple solutions that we have for you. So let me ask before, you know, we know the mask, um, she's gonna talk briefly about this and then we're gonna find out what solutions you have come up with to, uh, to get through this. Okay, so Laura. So by now we are all well aware of some of the struggles of, of having something extra behind our ears. If we already wear hearing aids or cochlear implants, maybe we also wear glasses. Now we're adding the string of the masks. So again, it's been several months now, so maybe you all have come up with some creative ways to relieve the string from behind the ear so that we're less worried about accidentally flinging off a hearing aid or it just being uncomfortable with having too many things behind the ear at once. <laughs> so we wear the dog. You're about I'll turn here. So Anne right now is, let's see, we're wearing something that has two straps so that instead of being on the back of the ear, it's relieving and, and just sitting up above and down below. How many people how, do how many of you have tried this type of mask or do you use this type of mask? Any of you? Maybe no you? one. <laughs> Where do you get Probably. that kind of a mask with that? Um, it's nice to have that open window in the front. Yes, and that's nice too, right? So we can read lips better, see all those visual cues we want. Um, to <laughs> so Tony, this one came from you. Where did you find the clear mask? You know, you can, you, you can just Google clear masks. Um, I got to tell you, I'm not sure, Winnie, that you would want to wear this mask. Um, you, I think what you would like is you would like people who are talking to you to wear that mask. That's true, like too. But I like that double string because, uh, um, and also I have a little growth on my face. And okay. so I need, I need that uh, space. Okay. Now I was talking about the window mask. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems to go out from the face. Yes. So I figured it wouldn't be such a bother on my face. Uh, let, me, let me tell you, um, you, I tried to wear that mask for a little while. It's very hot and uncomfortable. Hmm. So we have a couple other suggestions that might work for you. Okay. So this is a clip, okay? And what you can do with the clip is you can take it off of your ear and hook it. And I'm gonna bring Laura around this way and hook it so that the clip is low on the back of your neck. The strap is off of your ears, but the mask is still on. Where we can get this clip? That's wonderful. Yep. So we have some clips. We're having more made. Uh, my brother made them with a 3D printer. He did not design them. He just made them. Um, but we should have more, hopefully, by the end of the week. And if you come by our office or call our office, we'll know when they're in. But we have been giving out these clips. In the meantime, if you don't have this clip, you can go to Walmart or uh, CVS and you can get a hair clip and you can do the same thing with a hair clip is you take the barrette and you put it in and just pull it below the bottom of the mask to pull it off of your ears. Okay, so the advantage of this clip or something like this is that you're just trying to pull it low and not up on the top of the ears, but it takes the pressure off of your ears so that it doesn't hurt because I'm sure you guys are all experiencing those issues. So here's another one. I'm putting this on, <laughs> do you want? I can put it on, sure. So here's another one that is a hairband for women. I have seen a couple men wearing them, but a top um, buttons, right, sewn on to the hairband. So when you put the band on, 
and then you wear the mask, it attaches to the buttons. Am I on screen? Yep. <laughs> so you can see that it attaches onto here. So as it's getting colder outside, we maybe wouldn't <laughs> mind wearing a band, but this is another solution. And you can see in this picture on our slide that you could even take one of these normal masks that a lot of people wear. And if you have hair that's pulled back, you could try and loop it around behind in some fashion. But I think the clip idea is probably maybe easier to manage. Um, yeah. What have other people done? Has anybody come up with some other solutions? Anybody? Daniel? You gotta unmute yourself. Unmute. There you go. Okay. Um, I've been using the regular medical mask with a, looks like a rubber band because it takes up less space around the ear. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to always put it on from the front back and take it off from the front back because that's the way you put on your hearing aid. I don't that's take my hearing idea. off. I don't, that doesn't remove my hearing aid as often. Good, because that is definitely something a lot of our patients have been struggling with is being able to remove it without the fear of accidentally pulling out the yeah. hearing aid. Yeah, on, so that's on, a good idea. Put them on from the front back, take them off from the front back slowly. Slowly, yes, <laughs> there's a key. Uh, thank you. Kay, you have a comment? Yes, I read this on hints from Heloise. I cut loops of fabric from my knee-high stockings, you know, the sheer <laughs> nylon ones we used to wear, <laughs> and replace the ones that were killing me on my, they're nice, it's a nice cotton mask, but the elastic didn't agree with me. And so, this worked. Perfect. Yeah, that looks really nice and more comfortable. <laughs> yes, more, way more comfortable. I bought six pair, six of these and I couldn't wear them because of the elastic. Now I can wear them. Right, so she's okay. talking about replacing the elastic on the cloth ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So here's something for the manufacturer. So a little unrelated to the mask, but now with uh, more concern that we might accidentally pull out and lose a hearing aid, there's always an option to attach the back of the hearing aid to strings that clip to the back of a shirt. So again, if we're just concerned about accidentally flinging it, losing it this way, if it does come off when you're trying to slowly remove your mask or something else, then hopefully it, it won't fall, right? It will catch from the string and you'll be able to find it and not lose it in a parking lot or a couple of places that unfortunately some people have, have, have lost theirs. <laughs> Has anyone lost a hearing aid? We have found three of them in the parking lot here of Trader Joe's um, when people were coming out to get their hair done. And fortunately, we're able to look up the serial number, call the manufacturer and find out who they belong to. And we were able to return all three hearing aids to somebody. So one person brought it into us, the other two were found right outside our door. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Judy, Judy Mandel, do you want to unmute yourself, ask your question, make your comment? Judy? Okay. Okay. She's having difficulty. Go ahead and, and move on. Judy, when you're ready, just uh, let, let us know. Um, so for those of you who were able to attend the last session, uh, Jody from Widex talked a little bit about how when we do wear masks, it does degrade our speech signal to some degree. 
So if you were there, this might be review, but just wanted to quickly point out that when we have masks on, our volume of our voice is lessened. And also it's kind of muffling that speech signal. So some people are having us turn up the aids a little bit, whether that's their normal settings or even a separate program, we could call a mask program to help try and accommodate um, that, that change in voices as long as we are all wearing masks in a lot of places for the time being. And because we are at home more often, we want everyone to stay active. And that includes, of course, your hearing and your brain. So we wanted to just point out different exercises um, that can be completed at home. A lot of these you can do on your computer. Or for example, the first one we listed is called Hear Coach app. And it's something you download onto your phone and it's just games and exercises that are working again to keep your brain active and stimulated while we're maybe not out and about as often or socially communicating with other friends and family as often as we'd like to. So we don't have a lot of specific information on this slide about these, but if you were interested in more information on them, please let us know. Um, we'd be happy to provide more information. Are these apps on YouTube or wherever we can just find these apps? Wherever we can just download. So the app, the Hear Coach app, can be downloaded on an iPhone or an Android device, so any smartphone, by going through the app store. Oh, that's the deal. Do you have an iPhone or an Android? Yeah. Rena, do you have an iPhone? I have Android. I have Android. Android? Go to the Play store. Yeah, so if you go to the Play Store in the Android, oh. There you can type in here coach and it will pop up and that's a free app. It's just yep, something you can do on your own time, kind of playing games. And then if you complete that app and you want to do something a little more challenging, that's where lace or angel sounds would be the next step as good exercises to do on your own time. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Winnie? Yeah, can you download that app, the first one? Oh. I lost your, your voice, Winnie. I started to hear your oh. question. There you go. Oh, unmute. Okay, now it stayed. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you can actually download that Hear Coach app just on the regular computer instead of on the phone. Yes, good question. You can also look it up and download um, does it have to be an iPad or can it be a computer? I have a laptop. You can try going to Starkey Hear Coach. Okay. If you go to Starkey Hear Coach, then we believe on a normal laptop that you could download from there. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Diane uh, Gross, you have a question you want to? Yeah. Okay, I did. Um, I'm not 100% sure about this, but the cochlear implant websites, Cochlear America, Advanced Bionics, have um, kind of train your brain programs where you could go and listen and give feedback. And I believe that they're available to anyone, not just people who have the implants. So it's the same kind of thing where you could go to their websites and search around for the, um, audio training, oral training. And what I'll do later is I will check them out and send the information to Tony. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, that's a great point, Diane, that, that anyone can go and utilize those programs through the cochlear um, organizations. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a comment 
if I could, um, yeah. about some information. I, I, I wasn't sure that you were going to cover this. Were you, were you going to cover the California Public Health Regulation? Um, we have it here. It, uh, it slipped my mind right here, but Tony, go ahead. Since you turned me on to it, I think it's a great thing to come from you. Okay. So California Department of Public Health has a document on the guidance uh, for the use of face coverings. And uh, this was, I'm looking at a bulletin that was released uh, June the 18th, 2020. And there's, there's a comment here. Uh, the following individuals are exempt from wearing a face covering. And it says here, persons who are hearing impaired or communicating with a person who is hearing impaired, where the ability to see the mouth is essential for communication. So basically, I'm not saying that you, you know you want everybody to remove their mask, and I'm not saying you should remove yours, but um, it's certainly if, if if you you you're not going to go to jail. Nobody's going to arrest you um, because it's in the California regulations here in the guidance, California Department of Public Health, and so for instance, I could be in a grocery store and I can't hear the cashier, I could ask them to please lower their mask. Whether they would do that or not, it's up to them, but they would not get fined um, and they wouldn't go to jail. And, um, and I, could, I could lower mine, although lowering mine is not that, isn't helpful for communication with somebody else. But I, I just find it interesting. Um, there's, there's well over 10, categories of people who uh, they would reduce um, the requirement to wear a face covering. And I just read you the ones for people with hearing loss. Daniel, do you have a comment? You want to unmute yourself? <laughs> Daniel, you have your hand raised? Okay. Maybe must not. Be, must be an accident. Go ahead, uh, Anne and, and Dr. Laura, go ahead. Okay, so the last thing that we want to talk about is just a reminder that October is National Audiology Awareness Month. Um, and just a good time for people that you know to move forward, do things about hearing loss. Um, we're not going to preach to the choir here, so you're very aware that um, a, a myth is that everyone who has hearing loss is older than 65. So that is definitely a myth. Um, half of the individuals with hearing loss are younger than 65. And that hearing loss, no matter what age, if it's not, quote, normal, should be addressed. So that is one myth that we would like to debunk. Laura? And just a couple more myths and facts that we thought would be fun to share in, in light of Audiology Month. Um, one says, myth, dizziness, and balance disorders are simply inconvenient and not that harmful. Mm. Fact. Untreated dizziness and balance disorders can increase fall risk and result in hip fractures, broken bones, and head trauma. So audiologists do play a role in helping to find or diagnose um, certain disease disorders or ENTs also can help. So if you have concerns with this, it's not um, something to take light, but something to look into. Another myth, hearing loss does not affect your day-to-day -day life. Fact, individuals with untreated hearing loss are often excluded from communication and have feelings of loneliness, isolation, depression, and frustration. So for those of you wearing hearing aids, you will already know, recognize how much benefit you receive and how much more you can communicate with others and feel included. 
when you're wearing your hearing devices. Go ahead. And a couple more facts. Oh, yeah, Winnie? Yeah, I just had a comment on that balance and mobility. Um, I'm taking a class on balance and mobility, and oh. our instructor told us if anybody has hearing aids, they need to wear it because they could fall, you know. That's a great class. point. Yeah. Yep, because our hearing and balance system is all interconnected in our inner ear. We Another reason to wear hearing aids is to improve your balance. So thank you. Good. Also, I just want to make one um, comment about balance. There's something that is your normal unsteadiness that can come from aging and decreased hearing loss, but there's also vertigo, which is when the room is spinning and you're in spinning. And if you get what's called positional vertigo, you move your head in a certain position and you can make that dizziness come on. That is actually a very treatable uh, condition and oftentimes by going to a physical therapist and having them massage and manip manipulate your skull, you can reduce the amount of vertigo and often eliminate it. So I know many of you who have had that have done the Epley maneuver, which is uh, different exercises that they have you do. But don't just take it lightly, like Laura said. Really kind of evaluate whether or not it's something that is happening because of a low blood pressure or whether or not it's something that's happening maybe because the little crystals or rocks in your head are not functioning properly and could be adjusted. Because falling is a huge risk. All right. Uh Couple more facts just to share. Approximately one in eight children ages six to 19 have noise induced hearing loss. And noise induced hearing loss refers to something that usually could be prevented. So loud noise exposure causing permanent damage, again, could be prevented with hearing protection. Um, Approximately 30 million workers are exposed to hazardous levels of noise on the job. So that is a lot of people um, being exposed. And while most places follow rules to wear hearing protection if the noise is above a certain volume, um, still there can be risk of permanent damage long-term. And, oh yeah, Tony, sorry. Hey, you have a question? Uh, yes, I wanted to ask what that procedure is called for uh, correcting uh, vertigo or dizziness. I have a Tai Chi class and there are certain movements that the instructor makes. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to walk out of there. Sure, so most the most common form of that uh, condition is treated with what's called the Epley maneuver. And so, okay, and it's spelled E P L E Y. And a physical therapist is usually, or maybe one uh, more focused on dizziness, can help with those positions. We can make a referral. And we can always make a referral if you did feel you might benefit from something like that. Balance rehab. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Alan wrote the word in the chat, so. Oh, perfect, thank you. In the chat. Okay. Oh, and then last thing on this page, uh, hearing loss is the third most common health problem among older adults in the US. So it's something that's uh, very commonplace. And again, October recognizing that a lot more people could be doing something about that hearing loss um, that maybe haven't yet. Um, all in all for today, the main things we wanted to bring up were wearing your hearing devices, even if you're at home, and you think I'm not talking to anybody or it's quiet in here, still wear your hearing aids. Brain stimulation, auditory stimulation is always important. Two, 
consider different accessories that could help improve sound quality for different uh, devices you have. Again, we're home more now than usual. So if you're trying to Zoom with your family or this, or if you're watching videos you like, but you're missing a lot of the words, there are so many options that you could look into to help, again, improve that sound. And keep your brain active. So we briefly mentioned some of those training exercises you could do, starting with that Hear Coach app that's free to download, um, but just exercises and games that you can complete on your own time, and that'll help keep your brain working so that when we are able to go back to our normal lives, our brain will be ready. We can handle all the noise and distractions going on. The last thing that I want to add is that we have made a lot of adjustments to hearing aids for that extra program. So if you're struggling because the mouth is covered, just getting a few more decibels of sound when you're going to be in that environment can be a big help for clarity. So if you are struggling, I would encourage you to go back to your audiologist or dispenser and ask them if they might even sharpen up the sound slightly for you because little things can make a big difference. So thank you very much for having us. Um, I know it wasn't necessarily new information, but just a refresher. And if you have any questions or concerns, let us know. Thank you, Tony. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want to share? Just thank you very much for this presentation. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for listening. Okay, do you want to um, stop the screen share so we can see everybody? And um, oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And uh, so we can give everybody a chance who hasn't had a chance to say something. And it doesn't have to be about the pandemic or masks, but it could be. I use earbuds. Earbuds? Buds. Yeah, like what I have on now. Do other people find that works when I'm in using my computer? I, I could not use them, but, but people with a mild hearing loss certainly could. Um, Donald, you had you wanted to say something? You want to unmute yourself? Donald Smith, you have to unmute yourself. I was in accord with the person who was just talking about using uh, earbuds and stuff. I find, for example, TV ears to be a very useful thing for just watching the TV, or if you have a sound amplifier box, you can carry the sound with you and amplify it as much as you want. And those are about the only devices I have in addition to just regular hearing. And that's what I wanted to say. Just let people know the value of TV ears and amplifier devices for TVs and stuff like that. Okay. Hi. I, I find that people who have a mild, possibly moderate hearing loss uh, can use earbuds successfully for certain things. Um, and certainly uh, TV ears uh, in the same category. So not everybody is the same. It's really important that everybody realize that hearing loss is different for different people. I have a profound hearing loss and there's no way I could get any benefit from earbuds or, mm -hmm. and, and, or TV ears. I also have a cochlear implant and putting anything in this ear that I have a cochlear implant, this ear is dead. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So, TV, 
uh, TV ears and earbuds are, work great for certain classifications of people. And it's really important when you're talking to somebody else that has hearing loss to realize that their experience may be different. And just talk about all the options that are available so that so people can find the option that works best for them. I use um, I use wireless headphones for TV and I have a neighbor upstairs and next door. So I mute it except for through my wireless headphones so I don't bother the neighbors because I have to have it pretty, very loud otherwise. Does anybody else use earbuds? So Judy, do you wear hearing aids? Yes. So you take your hearing aids out in order to use those accessories? I wear hearing aids when I'm going to be with other people. But I'm home now. And I'm taking eight classes through Emeritus. So that's why I've been using the earbuds a lot. <laughs> and that, may, that makes sense. So um, you're utilizing a different solution in order to get the sound directly into your ears. Yes, but when I go out or I'm with my family, I have to wear hearing aids or I wouldn't hear them. That makes I'm sense. not totally deaf, but I'm deaf enough. <laughs> well, the reason that um, for a lot of the people on this call that they could not do what you're doing is because the hearing aid is customized for their hearing loss. And so by putting the earbud in, you can't get the exact um, spectrum that you need for the best clarity. So that's why utilizing these other accessories that we were talking about right. utilizes your hearing aid for the hearing loss you have and then gives you that extra boost. Thank you. Yeah. Might try it. <laughs> Before I got my um, implants, I was using earbuds, little Sony earbuds to listen to my TV and my transistor radio. I also had, um, they were called silhouettes. Mm -hmm. They looked like um, Judy's earbuds, but they were also the shape, very flat, the shape of a hearing aid. And you could put them like between your head and the hearing aid and it would pick up sound that way. So it was kind of like your own personal loop. Mm -hmm. I've tried I don't know if those, I, I don't know if those are still made. Those are dating ourselves. I just want you yes. to know. <laughs> well, look she at has my no hair. idea. <laughs> yes. No, I figured I was. I was going through some electronic stuff the other day and I found some and I thought, gee, I wonder if these still work. But this, um, the accessories for my implant work so well that I don't try anything else anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Winnie, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, I just wanted to make a comment. I, I uh, visited uh, on Zoom a Dr. Trin who does research on Alzheimer's disease. And I told him I was taking seven emeritus classes. And he said, that's great. And, and you tested 100% OK. So I thought, <laughs> wait, <laughs> it really helps to take those classes, Judy. <laughs> I had two already today. Uh, <laughs> me too yeah. i'm missing the second one because of this but uh i yeah. see you at some of them <laughs> yeah. yeah me too you <laughs> has anyone Stay active that's for sure yeah experience zoom fatigue no. <laughs> when you're on many many zoom calls and you just get really tired and you say i don't think i can do another zoom call yes <laughs> yes that's when you put up, Tony, that's when you put up your picture instead of a live thing, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there we go, yeah. just like that. <laughs> yeah. And my calendar got so full of Zoom things, I just start seeing things that look interesting and I write them down on the calendar. It's like there were, there were four today and I thought, no, I can't do four. I've got to choose one. So here I am. 
Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Elkin, Elkin, I see that you're on the call. Do you want to talk about, he is the one utilizing the Otacon clip. Are you still mm -hmm. utilizing that with your hearing aids? I'm sorry, El who, who is this? Elkin, Elkin. Yes, okay. Okay, yes, sir. The clip, there you go. Clip is very helpful for me, and certainly it makes a huge difference to me to be able to use the clip together with a dongle connected to the computer. Uh, that way I can hear much better. And for me, with my hearing loss, having the ability to feed directly into my ears makes a huge difference compared to even the best quality speakers. And certainly, I also had used uh, hearing um, earphones, headphones, but there's nothing like for people with pretty severe hearing loss, nothing like having hearing aids which have been adjusted and, and optimized for one's own hearing loss. So, um, through the COVID-19 era, uh, one tries to do the best one can. And certainly, Tony, with what you do with the Hearing World Club, I didn't uh, get the opportunity to vote or to acknowledge earlier on. Uh, this was the first one that uh, I participated in. And then I've also been able to participate in many of the technology clubs uh, Zoom sessions as well, uh, the video club, the camera club, the PC club, and the Mac club. So it's mm -hmm. helped enormously being able uh, to use the desktop computer, which I have, and being able to hear directly into my hearing aids. Thank you for sharing, Elkin. And he had set that up prior to COVID. So he did that last year just because he was struggling so much on the computer, as well as the benefit of him hearing it directly into his ears, his wife doesn't have to hear it at, at all. Okay, well, I think everybody's had a chance to say something and any last minute comments anybody wants to make? Anything they wanna share? I do. Tony, you yeah. put a caption call phone in my house many years ago. Okay. Yes, I did. And I want you to know that it's still working perfectly. And I went to a fair and another company sold, not sold, but said they would bring me one for the kitchen. It broke <laughs> very quickly. Oh and that's why I don't want a new one because... This one is like perfect. I couldn't live without it. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, you know, that was a 2011 that I installed your phone. I know, I but it. I'm not getting another one. I like, yeah. you did a great job. <laughs> it was May probably I? your hands. <laughs> Lisa, you want to make a comment? I do. Judy, I'm thrilled that you're still using and enjoying your caption call phone. I have been with the company for five years now, and I, I love that we can do that for people. If you would like a second phone in your kitchen, we will do that for you. You can have another caption call phone, and anybody who has one is welcome to get a second phone based on need or size of your place or just desire to have one. If you want to use them, we will gladly provide them. And Okay. <laughs> Tony did a great job of giving everybody the phone number at the beginning of the meeting. I just want to make sure you know it's an 877 number. So it's 877-557-2227. Thank you. Eight, sure. 877-557-2227. Thank you. And I'm always available to help and answer any questions. So thank you for the, uh, for the promo. We're glad you're happy. <laughs> <laughs>
have to change the PowerPoint. Bad. My bad. That's okay. You know what? If that's the the worst thing that happens today, it's all right. <laughs> Judy, you can get the, the latest model for your kitchen. It has a speaker phone. It has a built-in answering machine if you don't already have um, an answering device. Um, it's, yeah, because you put it in. <laughs> the, new one, the new one has a speaker phone. So okay. there's a few other... <laughs> added benefit so it's something for you to enjoy thank you <laughs> tony won't put it in but a very handsome young man named david will oh he's very nice <laughs> that's you'll get a new boyfriend that's what we, we, we have so many cable guys from spectrum okay. and out of our house they're my boyfriends <laughs> our captionist is uh, time is up and mm -hmm. I've just really enjoyed being here. And I'll tell you, I look forward to these meetings. I attend a variety of other meetings. I'm gonna be posting uh, in email um, meetings from the Hearing Loss Association chapters throughout California. And it doesn't matter if the chapter is in Northern California or Los Angeles or whatever, you can join. Um, if the topic sounds interesting to you, um, <laughs> you're welcome to join in. So I'll be sending everybody a little bit later today, maybe first thing in the morning, I'll be sending you a notice um, that has uh, links uh, at, to all the chapters that are holding virtual meetings. And particularly, I'm going to send you um, the one that meeting that Saturday that California Phones is going to be presenting, talking about their amplified phones. They're gonna talk about their instruction classes on Zoom for smartphones and uh, any other services they're offering. So I'll get that out to you uh, this afternoon um, or first thing in the morning. Tony, can I just add that if anybody wants to know about these clips when they come into the office, let Tony know that you're interested because she's got everybody's email and then we'll get you a notification of when you could come in and pick one up. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, and Dr. Laura. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enjoy these meetings. Please tell a friend. You know, tell a friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with hearing loss and um, they can join in and get the information. Me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.